Hello, my name is Marcus, and this is going to be fun. All right, so now we just have this plain piece of text here doing absolutely nothing. So let's start by pre-composing this, Control, Shift, and C, and let's just call this stuff. So let's start by making these circle things that are gonna be swirling around this text here. And you can even go in here and choose title action safe so it's easier to see where the middle is. Let's just go to the middle here and uh, hold down left click and then control alt shift to make it uniform and symmetrical. So see now we have this first little shape here and let's go into the settings and delete fill. We only want the stroke right now. So we can just increase the size of the stroke, something along these lines. Maybe go up into the path and decrease the size, something along these here lines. So now we got this first one here. We can even animate this one over time. But let's just start by duplicating this, Control D. And let's just increase the size of the next one, so something like this. And we also want this weird things with the choppy parts, so we can duplicate it again. Let's just place it on top here, and let's just call this Chopper. There we go. And once again, let's go in here into the settings, contents, ellipse, uh, ellipse path, and just increase the size, and go into the stroke, and increase that size as well. So see, now we wanted to cut it up into pieces, so we're gonna go down here into dashes, and click on that bad boy once. And see, we want to make those dashes quite long, so we just increase the dash size. And you can hold control down where you're pressing the arrow key up and down to increase or decrease in slower values, or in lower values, sorry, which is quite nice. See, already now we got some deliciousness here. We can even make this bad boy rotate by going into transform. And I'll click on rotation here, and let's apply an expression like... Uh, time times a hundred that is way too much so let's set it down to maybe 10 there we go now we also want those lines behind all of this stuff going on so let's make a shape for that let's go up here into the pen tool and let's just make a straight line so left click and then hold shift down and left click again so we get this nice perfect horizontal line and let's go into this bad boy let's call this well line Z something like this and let's go into this bad boy here so into the shape delete the fill because we don't need it and increase the stroke size by quite a smidge something along these lines we can even move the path down by going into path and selecting it moving it down with the arrow down key something like this and now we can actually just duplicate it over time so go into add here and choose the good old-fashioned repeater there we go so once you have the repeater active, right now it's going to the right. Uh, we can see it by going into transform repeater. You can see it's going to the right. We don't want that. So zero and set it to maybe 50 in Y. That's not enough. Maybe something like this, uh, 60. All right, we want this to fill the entire screen. So we go down here into copies and just increment drastically. And we want this to loop indefinitely. So let's click on the path once again and just move it out of frame. Something like this approximately. You can see we need some more copies. We just go down here and increase that. Now we want to animate it down all the time. So let's go here into transform and click on the position. And since we know we're only moving it 60 pixels every time, we can just animate it 60 pixels forward. So just add to your Y axis plus 60. There we go. So see now it's just gonna perfectly hit that same place all the time. And if you alt click on position, let's apply a cute little expression called loop out. So at the end of the keyframe, it's just gonna start looping itself over and over again endlessly. So see, right now it's going in front of everything else. We do not want that. So let's just take it all the way down behind the cheese and everything else. And we want it to be cut out by the previous lines here. So let's duplicate the line that is equivalent. There you go. Let's duplicate this bad boy, take it all the way down here. So let's apply fill to this bad boy here. So go into this little thing here and let's add a fill. 
So see, already now it's covering everything up, which is nice. Let's make it completely black for the sake of clarity. And we want these lines to be cut out by the alpha of the circle or the transparency of the circle. So we go down here and we select alpha inverted matte. And right now it's not very apparent, but if we choose to show transparency, you can see that it's being cut out. So let's apply this and we want it to not touch the ring. Let's just disable this guide once again so we can see what we're doing. We don't want it to touch the ring, so we're going to increase the stroke size of that mask. And see, there we go. Now let's go back to the screen glitch comp here. So we're going to start applying some delicious effects to this entire thing. Go up into layer, new, solid, and let's call this Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Make it completely black. There we go. And OK. And this is basically going to be the layer that drives the entire effect based on what we have in stuff. So if we go over here to effects and presets, we're going to choose, you guessed it, Vegas. If I could write. And there we go. Double click on that bad boy. So under image contours, we wanted to look at the stuff. So see already now it's creating these Vegas effects based on the luminance of the stuff layer. And we're going to do a bunch of stuff here. So first of all, we want to look at effects and masks because later on, we're going to add some effects to the stuff comp. So let's make segments one because we only want one line to go all the way around, something like this. I'm even going to set it to random phase because I want it to be offset independently on every single contour it can find. And let's make this a nice greenish green green. And we want it to actually rotate over time so we get some nice movement on this. So I'm just going to alt click on rotation and write time times Let's say 100, we'll probably change this, but... So we want the end opacity to keyframe over time, so at the beginning here it's going to be quite short, so let's just uh, keep it there at zero, and here at the end, at seven seconds, it's going to be fully uh, set up, something like this. And we're also going to keyframe the length, which we're also going to add an expression to, but here at the end we want it to be one, and at the beginning we want it to be quite low, something like this. We want it to look like it's glitching around all the time. Now we're going to add some twitchiness to the length of this effect as well. So we're going to add a slider. There we go. Slider control, double click on that bad boy. I'm going to call this one times. I'm going to duplicate it, control D, and I'm going to call this one amount. There we go. We're going to make a wiggle expression on the length of this Vegas here. So I'll click on length and write wiggle. There we go. Now we're going to pick whip up to the times slider here, write comma, and then pick whip up to the amount. There we go. So now we can keyframe this over time. So let's set times to, let's say, 16. And let's keyframe the amount. So all the way here at the end, we want it to be quite low. So let's say 0 0,03, something like this. Keyframe this bad boy. And here at the beginning, we want it to be quite high. So let's set it to like uh, 0 0,60. Uh, there we go. So right now, it's just going to blink and do all kinds of cool stuff while it's appearing. Blink, 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 blink. So now let's start adding some really nice glows to this bad boy here. So let's apply an effect called glow. Double click on that bad boy here. I'm just going to put it below the times and amounts or before, if you like to say it like that. Let's start making this into a screen blend mode so it doesn't burn out as easily. Let's just bring it down a smidge. Let's play around with the glow radius, something like this. And already now we can maybe duplicate it and increase the radius a smidge. Just play around with this bad boy, maybe decrease the intensity, duplicate again make this one quite wide. We want it to be a really nice wide glow, something like this. And now we're going to duplicate it one more time, but this one we're going to make completely white. So A and B colors. Let's just choose white here. There we go. And we're going to decrease the threshold very low and the radius also very low. We want it to basically only appear in the core 
of the glow or something like this. And we can increase the threshold until it only appears in the middle. I also have some exciting news. I'm on the verge of finishing a new animation tool that allows you to quickly animate many layers at once with dynamic offsets and even randomness. Not only can you offset animations, but you can also loop them, make them exponential and even offset effects. Let's make animation magic together. Keep a lookout for cheesy echo. So now let's start applying some serious glitchiness to this entire thing. So let's go down here into stuff and apply a solid composite effect. Double click on that bad boy. So this basically takes the alpha of the image and fills it out with actual color. So there's no transparency in the layer. So let's make it completely black. Let's activate it. So now this is completely solid, which is what we want. And let's apply a fractal noise effect. Double click on that bad boy. See, already now we're getting some really interesting stuff, but we of course don't want to eliminate all the graphics that we've made already. So let's set the blending mode to screen. So now we'll blend on top of our existing graphics. And if you like play around with brightness, you can see how you can add or subtract effects to this, which is pretty darn cool. So let's play around with this effect here. So let's set it to block first of all, because we want it to be quite blocky. Go down here to transform, unlink uniform scaling, and let's play around with this bad boy. I'm gonna stretch the heck out of this and maybe increase the Y axis, something like this. Maybe also increase the contrast because we want it to have like these big blocks. And we can already now just start playing around with the brightness. So the higher the brightness, the more it's gonna start tearing apart this entire thing, which is quite cool. We wanna increase these blocks quite a smidge. I'm gonna set the contrast very, very high, something like this. So we want it to, whenever there's a lot of brightness, it's basically just gonna completely glow up and uh, fill the screen. So we want it to appear very glitchy. So let's start playing around with the evolution here. So I'll click on evolution and let's apply a very sexy expression. So I'm gonna start writing W equals, and then we're gonna write wiggle, and we're gonna set to two comma 10. So now we're saving this as a variable. So let's go to the next line here and write posturize time, which means that it will decrease the resolution of the frame rate in this particular expression. So we're gonna write eight. So it starts with eight frames per second plus W. So whatever this value changes to, it's gonna add it to those eight frames, which is quite nice. There we go. And now we're gonna write time times 1,500. So it's gonna make like these really nice erratic flicker and, and flimps and stuff like that, which is quite nice. Flim, 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 flim. Lots of erraticness. And now we're gonna keyframe the brightness so it's not completely uh, distorted all the time. So go over here into second five. Let's just decrease the brightness until it's completely visible. Something like this, until it is no longer distorting the image. Almost something like this. Let's just keyframe brightness and go over here into maybe one second and bring it all the way up again, like uh, plus 400 or 300 or something. So it's really glitching all over the place, something like this. So now we have the basic setup here. So let's start applying also some displacement to the stuff because of course we need displacement. So let's create a new layer. You can go up into layer and create a new solid or you can press control Y and call this noise as a nice noise, which is ridiculous, but it works. Let's isolate this so we can see what we're doing and apply another fractal noise to this bad boy. And this is gonna be a little bit the same. You just go into noise type and set it to block. So we get these nice chunky chunks and you can just play around with the scale of this, something like this, just play around with the glitchiness. And we want this to animate very, very quickly. So I'm gonna out click on evolution and I'm gonna write time times 3,500. So very drastic, a lot of animation, something like this. And we actually don't wanna include the, the black color here because we only want it to displace in upwards and not downwards. So we're gonna apply a tint effect, double click on that bad boy, and set the black here to 50% brightness. There we go. And now we can actually hide this noise layer here and go down into our stuff and apply a displacement effect and there we go displacement map effect and we set it to look at the noise layer and effects and masks because we wanted to include the noise and let's set it to luminance and uh, luminance and maybe not so much in the y-axis but primarily in the 
X axis. So we're just got a little bit and we don't want it to displace all the time. So I'm going to go over here into second one. I'm going to keyframe this to maybe say 10 max displacement and I'm going to go over here into second seven and set it quite low to maybe like one. So I'm going to get a little bit of distortion all the time, just a smidge of a flicker. And now we want to add like these really nice lines, digital lines to this entire thing. So let's create an adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer. Let's call this lines, bam, and apply a Venetian blinds. There we go. This is a very cool effect because we can actually replicate a lot of other effects with it. So let's say rotation 90 and let's start increasing the transition. So see now it's creating small gaps uh, like lines across the entire thing. Let's disable transparency. So see it's looking quite digital already and we can decrease the width until it's quite low and the feather a bit so it doesn't become that hard. So we get this nice digitalness. Now let's apply the actual screen effect where it closes it opens. So let's make another new adjustment layer and let's just call this uh, screen and apply it below the lines and let's apply a transform effect. There we go. So, so here at the beginning, we can actually keyframe this a smidge here. So go over into scale, disable uniform scale and animate the scale height. And here at the beginning, we're going to set it to zero quite low and just slowly opens up like this, which is quite nice. And here at the end, we can kind of do the same second nine, press U to bring up the keyframes, make a keyframe and maybe a few frames and a zero. Uh, zero. There we go. We can even add some easing to this keyframe. So I'm going to select it and press Control Shift K and set it to zero in velocity and a hundred in influence. Which, if you look in the animation graph here, it's going to make like this nice uh, easing in of the value. And now we want this entire screen to be able to flicker every now and then. So we're going to write a specific expression for this. So let's first apply a slider to this uh, screen effect here. So select screen apply slider and same as before, let's just call it times, whoopsie daisy, duplicate and call this amount. There we go. And let's start writing a very sex expression in opacity. So I'll click on this bad boy and let's start by writing W equals wiggle, just like before. And you pick whip up to the times and then write comma and then pick with up to amount. And then at the end here, we're going to make this nice little semicolon thing. And down here, we're going to actually create the condition. So start by writing if and then parentheses, because in there is going to be the condition. We're asking if this happens, do something. And then we're going to write curly brackets, because in here we're going to tell it what it's going to do. So let's start by saying if if W is less than 100, which is its original value, as you can see here, then zero. Else, at the end of those curly brackets, we're going to start some new curly brackets. Else, it's going to be its original value. So whenever this wiggle makes the original value dip below 100, then it's going to be a 0% opacity. Otherwise, it's going to keep its original value, which is 100. So the cool thing is we can actually now keyframe the flicker. So let's go over here into one second and keyframe this bad boy. And then one frame before we can set it to, let's say 150, something like this. So it actually just glitches all the way until it starts. You can maybe set it to like two seconds or something. We can play around with this. If you want to receive a mail whenever there are new templates, advanced templates, tools, presets, courses, etc., then I would recommend joining the newsletter. You can find the link in the description. If you like these sort of text and logo animation tutorials, then I can recommend the playlist shown here on the left. I hope you find this useful and I'm looking forward to see what you can create with these ideas. Have a wonderful day with some cheese.